Hey everyone, it's the Eclectic Candyman here today checking out my 2001 Mustang Cobra with the beautiful North Carolina Blue Ridge Mountains in the background off the Blue Ridge Parkway. Let's check it out. All right, here is the 01 Mustang Cobra in laser red. I have owned this car for about 10 years, done quite a bit of work to it, but tried to make all the work that I did to it quite tasteful as I kind of pan around the car here, looking at the Cobra badging on the rocker panel there, the Shelby American Racing Cobra wheels coming to the rear end. One of my favorite parts of the car is the stance because of the wider wheels, a real muscle car look from the back with that Cobra badging. Everywhere I drive, this car is well known. I get lots of compliments on it. The red and black contrast is really pretty nice and growing me a lot. I'm always favoring a black car, but I gotta admit, this black on red over the years with the black accent stripes and wheels really grew on me. Excellent shape. You know, the Cobra, this would have been this pretty much the same car as the 99. So the 99 to 01 Cobra, you're looking at a naturally aspirated engine with 320 horsepower stock. They had a little bit of trouble in the 99 version that when I believe Road and Track got a hold of one and it wasn't proving to be 320 horsepower. So they were returned to Ford. They did modifications to the intake and exhaust and I believe the computer programming to get the true 320. That's why there is no 2000 model year Mustang Cobra. There is a Cobra R, an incredibly cool car. But as far as the regular Cobra, there wasn't one in 2000, so they could make the corrections and get out the 2001 model for which this is. This is a later build in late July of 2001. And for its age and paint, it is in excellent condition. I always tried to keep it polished and waxed, garage kept. I mean, look at that reflection right there with the mountains in the background. Isn't that cool? Some of the additions, kind of talking from the outside, I did upgrade the brakes. Now the Cobra already have dual piston calipers in the front, but those are bare slotted and cross-drilled rotors with Hawk HPS brake pads and Russell stainless steel lines. Stainless steel favorable over the rubber for expansion under high pressure. I have those wrapped in American Racing Shelby Special Edition wheels. These are nine inch wide front wrapped in BF Goodwrench Comp 2 AS tires, awesome tires. And on the rear you have the same setup except for you have the single piston caliper stock on the Cobra but the same brake setup. But these are 10 and a half inch rears. So they are super wide and one of the best attributes of the car, really giving it a nice stance and a nice look. So as you eyeball. The Flowmaster exhaust was on it when I got it, but the main attraction is of course the hooker long tube headers with X-pipe giving this a unique and aggressive sound from start to engine rev and all about. One of the things to note too that is always popular in the 99 to 01 are these amber tail lights. Now I never quite, quite got it. I get it on paper. These were the North American Canadian version and they used them on the 99 and 01. But because they only use them on those two model years, people like to take them off and sell them for over a grand on like eBay. But you can always tell this model year by those amber marked tail lights. Coming around to the driver's side, once again, now those rocker panel stripes are one of the things 
that I'm most proud of because I put them on myself. I followed the directions to a T. They were licensed, officially licensed Ford product, but they just really round out the car. They look stock, like something you would find on the 60s Mustangs or even my GT500. You've got the Cobra badging on both front fenders. You've got it on the front grille. And if you're really paying attention, you'll see that that is not a stock front chin spoiler. However, these new edge Mustangs, I just think they look amazing with it. That is a Mach 1 chin spoiler, but I don't think it deters anything. It certainly gives it a complete look. Again, one of the things that I really strive for on this car was to always replace the parts with new older stock Ford parts. So if you look at these headlamps right here, these are not cheap eBay replacements. They are Ford new older stock. Same thing with the rear tail light. When you start to get into cars this age, one of the biggest problems is the fading that you'll see. So it's rare to see one of these cars that's over 20 years old with a third tail light that looks like that. Very smooth, kept them in perfect condition the whole time and, and never had to replace the tail lights. All right, let's take a look at the engine. All right, taking a look under the hood here. I still have the original Cobra insulation up on the inside hood cover. Most people take that off, but because it says Cobra and is unique, I kept it on there. All right, under the hood here, taking up the entire engine bay is the star of the show, which is the hand-built 4.6 liter modular engine, 32 valves, four valves per cylinder. Hand-built, has the badge right here. 320 horsepower stock, lots and lots of American V8 muscle right here. This one has just a little over 100,000 miles, but a lot of things to point out here in the engine bay that make this one unique. Obviously, you already see some bolt-ons and some addition, but one of the things that I really took pride in with this engine was replacing parts with new older stock where needed to keep the freshness of the engine. For example, this entire intake with EGR valve bolts and everything was replaced because I got a good deal on it for several hundred dollars and it just replaced the entire makeup uh, and, and aesthetics of the engine just by replacing that one part. One of the other things to take note of that I did that not all 01 Cobra owners do, but I've got the spacer here on the intake that lets a little bit more air in, including following back. Let's take a look here. We got the AccuFab 65 millimeter throttle body in chrome, allowing more air in the K&N. They call it the filter pack, I believe, intake. And here's a part that's getting more and more difficult, if not very difficult to find. This is the Ford Racing 90 millimeter mass airflow sensor. So as far as air intake, we've got the intake, the high performance mass airflow, the upgraded throttle body to the new re newly replaced intake with the intake spacer, allowing lots of extra air into the engine. I also from Summit Racing was able to get this color matched alternator that pumps out a little extra juice. Backing out here and looking at some of the other parts on the engine, at least aesthetically, I went with the Moroso dress up and replacement tanks. For example, this tank right here is the coolant tank made by Moroso with the billet coolant cap. Now here, this is the Moroso power steering reservoir, and this is an actual replacement over the plastic one. I think it really helps the appearance of the engine. These two are dress up. That's the fuse cover and the brake master cylinder with billet cap as well. You'll notice back there, and I'll talk a little bit more about the clutch, but I've got the Ford Racing uh, clutch quadrant and adjustable firewall knob right there. So what you can do is you can turn it left and right and that adjusts it because these Mustangs, these series of Mustangs did not have a, um, a uh, hydraulic clutch. They were cable operated. So uh, a bit simple of a system. Yeah, backing out here. So we have the uh, front dress up here as well. It just kind of, instead of the plastic cover that came on this Mustang, we've got that one. Now, the pride and joy really is, and it's a little difficult to see, so I was able to zoom in and you can see the badge down there. 
for the hooker headers and coming off the engine. These are getting really difficult to find for this model year. So I'm pretty happy that I have them. The hooker long tube headers that lead into the X pipe. Let's see if we can get under there and take a little bit of a look at it. You can see right there, that's the X pipe and it would be difficult to see, but it would come down, whoops, but it would come down to the long tubes back to the Flowmaster exhaust in the back. Few other notes of interest in here. These coil covers that say powered by SVT have been replaced. That's aftermarket versus the one that I believe said 32 valve. Underneath you've got the MSD blaster ignition coils. Ever since I put those on when I got the car almost a decade ago, this thing does not miss a beat. You've got full spark, hot spark, just excellent, excellent revs through the power band. Just ensures all of that. Never had an issue. One of the other things I like about this car is the ability to work on it. You know, with this generation Mustang, everything's up front. You've got the alternator, you've got the water pump, you've got the power steering pump. You could take this belt off in a parking lot with a um, breaker bar. Very easy to work on. Now, this was the last of the naturally aspirated Cobra engines starting in, then they skipped the 2002 model year, although I do believe there were a few that were sold in Australia. But in 2003 and 2004, that version Mustang had an Eaton supercharger on top, affectionately known as the Terminator. It is a sought after car. Most people skip right over this and go straight to the Terminator. However, I will say these are a good deal to be had and they are still a collector car, low number engine. You're talking about a hand-built engine coming out of Michigan and so there's a lot to be desired with this car. You can add force induction to this, but I really like to say the naturally aspirated route it has a different sound because with my GT500, I have the force induction. So this is a deeper, richer sound that you're getting from this. And of course you could do cams and there's a lot of things you could do, but there is plenty of power to come out of this engine right here. All right, one other point of interest under here are these MRT color match hood struts. I really like that upgrade because you don't have to use the traditional hood prop. They're very nice. They bolt right in without any kind of rivets. I do have a video on that that I can leave in the description on installing those, but for less than $200, I think that was a major improvement on the engine. Very easy to open and close. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the interior of this Cobra. How nice is that in the background with those Blue Ridge Mountains and Mount Pisgah? By the way, I do have a video on my other channel called Mr. Mount Man. I'll leave a link up here where I went on a drive here on the NC9 Sidewinder just on the other side of town if you want to check it out. All right, let's go on the inside and take a look at some of the preserved nature and unique nature on this particular car on mine. Starting out, one of the things that are really cool on the Mustang Cobra versus like say a GT are the leather seats with the Alcatara inserts. They have the Cobra badging, just a great seat. They hug you and you really can stay settled in as you're going around the corners. I do have these Ford Cobra mats. Those are getting very difficult to track down. You'll see the tan ones from time to time, but finding a black set in good condition is quite challenging. They did not come with the car. You did have to buy a set. There are different Cobra mats, but these ones you did have to purchase. I was able to track them down about 10 years ago when I got the car. Kind of panning through. Here's another rarity, which is this Ford Racing, and it looks like the sun's reflecting on it, carbon fiber shift knob. And again, you got the reflection, but there is the running horse logo on it. Let's see if I can. With the five-speed Tremec transmission and once again, the Hurst short throw shifter that I installed. Got an Alpine system all around, all the speakers and a kicker sub in the back. Sounds fantastic. The dash, everything's in great shape. Looking to the back like a lot of these Mustangs, a lot of these Cobras, they just, not a lot of use back there. Although the kids do enjoy riding in this. 
especially when we're going in the mountains. So one of the things I liked about this car, when you get into it and you just take a wide look at it, it's a sharp looking muscle car. Everything from the seats to the dash, it was well designed by Ford. It's held its age. I think it's much nicer looking than the Fox body. It was a huge improvement over the Fox body Mustangs, which were quite pedestrian, even the 93 Cobra, but not this car. This car does turn heads from the inside and out. Let's go over to the driver's side. Coming in the driver's side, one of the things you'll notice right away is the Cobra steering wheel with the leather wrap steering wheel. You do have the leather, leather shift boot and as well as the emergency brake. I have the same Cobra mats on the driver's side. One of the things you cannot see, but up under there that's new. Let's talk about the uh, clutch for a minute. So I do have the Ford Racing clutch quadrant, the firewall adjustment mechanism that I showed you on the inside of the engine bay that adjusts the uh, engagement and tension of the clutch. And you can't see it, but what was recently replaced is a dual friction ram clutch along with Ford Racing flywheel. And so this thing shifts amazingly. I do also like the gauge faces here. They are clear and concise. I'll be honest with you. This is one area I actually do like this 01 Cobra over my 2009 Shelby GT500 KR are the gauges. They are just really easy to read day or night. The separation at a quick glance, I really like the white on black with the contrast. I think they look great. The only thing I do like better on the 03 and 04 is that they did put SVT on the tachometer, I believe. So once again, car very sharp from the driver's side as well. Well, there you have it. That's a great look at this 2001 Mustang Cobra. What a backdrop again. I just beautiful July day here in the mountains to take a look at this awesome muscle car. Even had a couple of people stop by and say how cool it looked. It will be a little bittersweet though because I only have room for one Mustang Pony in the stable at home and that would be the GT500. So enjoyed this car while I had it. It'll be moving on to another owner eventually. Well, there's only one thing left to do and that's to get in this car, fire it up and listen to those ponies and V8 engine come to life. Say listen. Thank <laughs> you.